Hello and welcome to my team's presentation of the week 13 lab encryption. We will be demonstrating a few of the ciphers that we've made uh, during this last week. My name is Michael Hagerhorst and I will be presenting the rail fence cipher. The rail fence cipher is a simple transposition cipher. As you can see here, it can take a string and it places those the characters of that string on different rails. Uh, the rails can be any arbitrary number. Obviously one rail would uh, create just the normal string uh, and a rail that is too large will also result in just the original string as well uh, so you need to find a number of rails that is a good number of rails for the text that you're going to have uh, but it just places the characters of the string along the rail this version presented here removes all spaces uh, the one we implemented does not and can accept any character. So we can go ahead and take a look at it here. Uh, to start, I set an arbitrary number of rails uh, that it can fall between. The, the minimum is three, the maximum is 10. Uh, and that is the, t the number of rails that the encryption actually uses is determined by the password, which is uh, generated right here. All it does is it sums up the characters of the password and then it puts it between that range, the minimum value and the maximum value range. Uh, all that needs to be done for this cipher is to generate a number of rails and place the characters one at a time on each of the different rails. And once it's done that, it just appends all the rails together, reading from left to right. Uh, so going back to our website example, it reads D N E T L H S, and then it reads the second rail, and then the third rail. To decrypt, uh, there's a few different techniques that we can use. There's a mathematical technique that calculates the number of letters per rail, and then places those the characters for that rail straight on using the cipher text. So it would take the these letters from the cipher text and place them on the first rail. Uh, do the same for the second rail and the third rail. There's a mathematical way to do it, or the alternative way is to generate a number of rails and simply do the same zigzag pattern up and down, leaving markers uh, to determine how many characters per rail there needs to be and then place them on directly with the cipher text. Here I can show you an example of the rail fence cipher working. So I quite like pi. So I'm going to go ahead and type I like pi um, and a good password. Uh, today is general conference. So how about we do the password of conference? There we go. So it ran the cipher and here you can see it took the plain text I like pi, it scrambled it up, that's what transposition is, it scrambles up the letters, and then to decipher it, it deciphers it and gives it back to us in the exact same order. It's not a particularly strong cipher, but it does make it a little bit more difficult to read and if you pair it with another cipher such as the Foursquare cipher or one of these other ciphers that we will show you today, uh, it can be a particularly powerful one. I'm going to be going over the auto key cipher and uh, what the auto key cipher is is it's another type of sub substitution cipher so I think it was called um, I have a reference right here and uh, basically what you're doing is you're you're getting some text from the user that you want to encode and you get a key from them and then with those two things you're creating a table that would look something like this and you're using this table to generate ciphertext. So I've, I've done that with this, uh, this like simple couple of functions that we wrote. And uh, here's that working. So let me run this. So we're going to want to do auto key. So we'll do some test text here. And we'll do password, which is just another string of text. And so with that, this is what it generates. So right here is our output. So this is our original text that we inputted. This is the um, cipher text that the program generated. And so what the program did was generate that table and then from that table export all of this text into the, this obscured text now. And then the decoding is pretty much the same thing as encoding, but it just does it the opposite so it recreates the same table with the key and the and the encoded text and then is able to extract the right information just to 
read back what you what you put in originally. So here's my pseudocode. First thing I'm doing is I'm uh, limiting the alphabet to just be 26 characters, so just all lowercase. And then next thing we do is we greet the key in the in the the text from the user, and so we we take both those things and we're able to generate that table next. So we populate that table with the right letters enabled so we can have the right letters in the right rows and columns so we can generate the ciphertext. Then we generate the ciphertext and we display that to the user. And then for the decipher or the decrypt, it's um, the opposite of that. So we take the ciphertext and the key and we generate the same table and then instead of reading it one direction, we read it the other direction. So like we read it from the rows instead of the columns, and uh, that's how we're able to decipher the the text. The uh, cipher that I worked with, I worked with the RC4, which is a uh, systematic stream cipher, and uh, the way it works is like this: it, it's uh, telling you it generates a pseudo random stream of bytes, uh, key stream using the key K. The key stream bytes are used for encrypting by combining it with plain text using bitwise uh, exclusive XOR. We'll show you how that works in here. Let's um, run it in a sandbox from the RC4. Enter some text and password. And you can see what the uh, cipher text version of some text is and an explanation uh, quickly of how it works. And we'll let the uh, server die on this sandbox while we talk about the other example, which is the Vernon cipher. It's a method to encrypt alpha, uh, alphabetic text. It is uh, one of the transportation techniques for converting a plain text into a cipher text. Uh, you see it takes a plain text and creates a key from it. And from the key, the number of the letters in the alphabet, um, the, uh, the array. But if they go and you add the, the key and the plain text, but if they go over 26, then you have to subtract 26 from that number to get the ciphertext number. So let me show you how that works in the sandbox. Okay, let's run the Vernon cipher, some text, a password, and the plain text is converted to ciphertext, but it can be converted back to uh, deciphered. This is Ben Rencher, and I chose the Visionaire cipher to work on this week. The idea behind this cipher is you have a master uh, array or alphabet or a set of characters that you are going to use to substitute characters in your plain text into ciphertext. However, this isn't quite the same as a simple uh, Caesar type cipher. Instead, what happens is you provide a key that you match up with your cipher or with your plain text. And if the key is too short to cover the entire plain text, you repeat the key over and over until it is the same length as the plain text. And you use the letter in the plain text and the letter or character in the plain text and the character in this key. You match that uh, letter up with the index number inside your array of characters. You basically add those indices from the plain text in the key characters together and then whatever the value is is going to be the new index for the character that you're going to use for your cipher text that code is shown down here you see i get the for each character in the plain text we're going to grab that character and uh, we're going to match that character up with the index value within the master array for the cipher text we're going to grab the character from the master array that is basically is the place for the um, plain text index added to the, the key index for that character. And then decrypting is as simple as using the ciphertext character, finding the index in the master array, and then using the key, uh, the keys index in the master array. You subtract the ciphertext index value or no, you subtract the key index value from the ciphertext index value. If that value is greater than zero, that is your index for basically returns the, the, the correct character from the plain text. 
And then if it is less than zero, you must add the length of the array to the result in order to get the correct plain text character. So that's a lot of explanation. And let's see this in action here. Okay, so we're gonna select the Visionaire cipher, which is mine. And we'll add some plain text here. Um, okay, quick round jump. Fox jumps over the hill. And we will use a key or a password. And you will see here's the plain text that we had. Quick brown fox jumps over the hill. Using the key, the cipher text is interpreted as this jumble of letters and characters. And then decrypted, we see the same plain text. And that is it for the visionary cipher.